Louise Franoise de La Vallée Ray was born in the city of Tours to a noble yet modest family. Educated at court, she became a lady in waiting to Princess Henrietta of England. Her gentle nature and quiet charm attracted the Sun King himself, and fate led her into the heart of Versailles. As the mistress of Louis XIV, La Vallée Ray remained in the background, avoiding court intrigue and attention. Her genuine affection and humility set her apart. She was called the king's shadow, reflecting not his glory, but his soul. Later, she withdrew to a convent, dedicating her life to repentance and prayer. In her letters, one feels the inner struggle between earthly love and a longing for God making her one of the most touching figures at court. Francisco Pizarro was born in the town of Trujillo, Spain, to a poor family. He had no formal education and set out early in life to seek fortune overseas. Pizarro joined expeditions to South America, where he gained experience, ambition, and a dream of conquest. Pizarro went down in history as the conqueror of the Inca Empire. With a small army, he subdued a vast realm capturing the capital of Cusco and imprisoning the ruler at Ahualpa. His actions brought immense wealth to Spain, but led to the downfall of an ancient civilization. He was called the man who walked over the bones of gods for gold. His end was just as dramatic. He was killed by former comrades, leaving behind a legacy marked by glory and blood. Sultan Aga Khanum was one of the most influential women in Safavid Persia, probably of Armenian or Georgian origin. She became the chief consort of Shah Abbas II. At court, Sultan Aga Khanum was respected and held considerable power. After Shah Abbas II's death, she retained her influence at court and became a patron of Shiite shrines. Her charitable work extended to schools mosques and shelters. Sultan Aga Khanum's name appears in historical chronicles as a symbol of devotion and strength. She was called the mother of the empire, whose wisdom did not fade after the harem curtain fell. Robert Carey was born into a noble English family. The youngest son of Henry Carey, first Baron Hunston, he was connected to Queen Elizabeth I through his grandmother, Mary Bolin. He received a fine education and began his political and military career in his youth. Carey became famous for his bold move. He was the first to inform James VI of Elizabeth's death, hastening to Scotland to gain favor with the new king. This act earned him influence and titles. He became keeper of the king's bedchamber and later the Earl of Monmouth. He was remembered as the man who wrote history, arrived first, and remained at court forever. <laughs> Joanna of Austria was born in Madrid to Emperor Charles V and his mistress, Barbara Blomberg. Though an illegitimate daughter, she was recognized as part of the Habsburg dynasty from an early age. At court, she received an outstanding education, preparing for an important mission in European politics. Joanna of Austria served as regent of Spain during the minority of her brother, Philip II, and proved to be a wise and determined ruler. She supported the Catholic Church, cared for internal stability, and helped strengthen royal authority. She was called the beacon of honor and virtue in difficult times. She spent her final years in a convent, continuing to influence politics through extensive correspondence and spiritual guidance. Marie de Rabutin Chantel 
Marquise de Esvine, was born in Paris into a noble but impoverished family. Orphaned at a young age, she received an excellent education and married early. After the early death of her husband, she devoted herself to raising her daughter and to lively correspondence within. High Society Madame D.S. Vine made history as one of the greatest French writers through her letters vivid chronicles of the era of Louis XIV. She observed court life, mocked its manners, and subtly captured the spirit of her time. She was called the voice of wit and tenderness, reflected in lines for the ages. Her letters are still studied as a model of style, wit, and sincerity. William Louis of Nassau Dillenburg was born in Dillenburg into the family of Count John VI. He was educated at Heidelberg and Leiden University. From a young age, he was involved in political life, supporting the Protestant cause and the independence of the Dutch Republic. As Stadtholder of Friesland, he played a key role in organizing the Republic's army. William Lewis was the first to introduce a new model of military drill, inspiring soldiers by personal example. He actively corresponded with Maurice of Orange, developing military reforms that influenced all of Europe. He was called the master of small victories without which great freedom would not have been possible. He died of smallpox at the age of 60 leaving behind a military and political legacy. Diego Carrillo de Mendoza was born into a noble Castilian family. From a young age, he received an excellent education and began a military career. He took part in important campaigns of the Spanish Empire, demonstrating strategic talent. His diplomatic skills paved the way to high government positions. As Viceroy of Peru, Diego Carrillo de Mendoza sought to strengthen the crown's authority and develop the colony's economy. He reformed taxation and supported infrastructure development. His rule combined firmness with care for his subjects. He was called the builder of order at the edge of the world. After returning to Spain, he continued serving the king, participating in negotiations and internal administration. His wise decisions and diplomatic tact left a notable mark on the empire's history. <laughs>